right, good morning. So I thought Dr. Judy could be back this morning. Unfortunately, the antibiotics that they had to give her for her basically sinus and just probably, she probably had strep throat too, honestly. But anyway, for her infection, her upper respiratory infection of some sort, um, she had a reaction to the antibiotics that they gave her. So she is feeling very under the weather today. So go figure. But um, hopefully she will be on the mend, this poor thing. She's been so sick the last week. Um, anyway, so really quick, someone had um, a really good question about the different types of sources of omega-3 and 6, specifically for cats, but it's pretty much the same for cats and dogs. Um, we really like the marine sources, so we um, on our website we have the Iceland Pure Salmon Oil and Sardine Oil. We also have the capsules, which I would recommend for dogs, cats, and capsules. In my experience, don't mix super well. Um, so those are some options that uh, are on our website. I also just got the uh, Dr. Tobias Calamari Oil. It's a really high quality source of omega-3 and 6 as well. It's fully tested, safe for heat. He says that it's uh, all of his stuff is just for dogs, but it's completely fine for cats as well. It's actually the same oil that goes into his human products, so it's good for us too. Um, so I, my cats love the calamari oil. They sometimes will eat salmon or sardine oil, but for some reason, they're a little bit hit or miss with that. So anyway, those are my top three, um, a salmon oil, sardine oil. We use Iceland Pure for those, and then uh, I think Nordic Naturals maybe has a, a pretty good oil as well, and then Calamari Oil from Dr. Tobias. I really, really love that one. Okay, um, so I today I wanted to talk about how important it is to have a holistic philosophy for not only us, but for our animals as well, and we actually had a really cool little experiment happen um, in our office. So Jenny, who manages all of our inventory and shipping and fulfillment, she's amazing, especially through Black Friday. Go Jenny. Um, and she has Logan, the little party cocker spaniel you may have seen off and on. Uh, he's black and white. Super, super cute. Um, but anyway, Logan was the one that um, they had put on a hydrolyzed diet because they thought that he had uh, severe food allergies. And so when um, we learned of this, we've been working with Logan for a while, and so we went ahead and did the NutriScan allergy testing, uh, which is $50 off the entire month of December using the code Judy50, FYI. Um, it's normally only like 10% off, which is uh, like 20 bucks or something, 40 bucks, and it's 50 bucks this month. Um, so we did the NutriScan testing with Logan, and we were shocked to find out that his allergy testing came back that he was sensitive to no foods at all. They tested for 24 different foods. Um, so he, we were all shocked. We were like, what? We thought he was allergic to everything, but he's allergic to nothing? So we tested it out. We started just giving him some plain proteins, just to introduce it slowly, and he didn't have any reactions. He used to have um, these big, gooey hot spots and all sorts of things. So when um, he made that transition, then uh, Jenny was mostly feeding, um, I think she did some Vital Essentials, which is a freeze-dried raw, then um, did some Viva Raw and added the raw vibrance to it. So really improved his, his diet over the, oops, my lights turned off, really improved his diet over the hydrolyzed protein. Um, and so he he's young and healthy otherwise besides what we thought were food allergies so um, he he started improving and doing great and he's a young healthy dog running around and the only thing is we noticed that he had really gooey eyes um, they were runny with like a real thick it wasn't you know yellow or green where it looked like infected but it was just in the mornings when he would wake up his eyes would just be covered in this you know clear or white ish uh, eye discharge and so Jenny and I were talking about it and you know now he's on this really great diet and has no food sensitivities so and it wasn't really time for seasonal allergies which it was a possibility but um, I was a little skeptical so we started talking and I said you know what let's just put him on the Phytos Flora which is by Adored Beast um, which is a pre and probiotic but the thing that is really awesome about Phytos Flora is it has 14 strains of probiotics, but it also has two additional strains of canine-specific 
probiotics. Um, and I think this is the first and only product to do that. So anyway, Phytos Flora, I firmly believe that right now this is the best pre and probiotic supplement on the market. I'm a big fan. I'm convinced. So I said, hey, Jenny, let's just give him a Phytos Flora. He had been on the hydrolyzed diet, which, you know, isn't the greatest nutrition. Um, and so I said, you know, let's just put him on Phytos Flora and see if his gut health just needs a little boost. Um, and as you know, that gut health is extremely important for a lot of things, but it also contributes to um, immune health. A lot of the, I think they say 80% of our immune system really stems from our gut health. So um, definitely doesn't hurt if you are thinking that your dog either has a weakened immune system or might need a little bit of assistance with their gut health. Within, I think, a few days, two or three days, she saw a dramatic improvement in his eye discharge. And so again, this is the eyes, this is the gut. I, a, a lot of traditional veterinarians may not make that connection, right? But because we're more holistic, we think of the whole body as one big system. We really look for what is the root cause. And it might not be obvious. In this case, it's a little bit more obvious. Um, but it might not be as obvious as, as Logan's case was. But that's why the holistic philosophy is so important. Because you have to be able to link things that look like they may not be related to each other. And so sometimes we'll see this in the traditional veterinary setting where, you know, they're really look. you go in for a specific problem and they're really looking for, okay, what is causing that specific problem in this specific area? So if you're having gut issues, they may say, oh, okay, or we're looking at an IBD or we're looking at, you know, X, Y, and Z, when really it could be you have a food sensitivity or something else going on in the system um, that's causing inflammation. So that is why the holistic philosophy is so, so important. Um, and so uh, I, I wouldn't say above, but complementary to another example of holistic medicine is how traditional Chinese veterinary medicine works. So traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, which Dr. Judy is um, very well versed in, it, it basically talks about the different personalities, the different systems, and they're all linked together. So a good example of this is they say that the in traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, they say that the eyes are the window to the liver. And so that is really important information to know because when you're having an eye problem in traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, you know you also need to support the liver, maybe drain the liver, whatever the specific case is. Um, another example is for the water element that's ruled by the kidneys. And then the kidneys control nervous system, bones and joints, um, and that is linked to the water element. So traditional Chinese veterinary medicine is all about how these things are all interconnected and how you need to support the whole body or the whole system if you're having one specific problem. And that is why we can even just with nutrition, food therapy, things like that, we can have a really big impact on our pet's health from home because traditional Chinese veterinary medicine tells us, okay, if you want to, you have an issue with the eyes, you need to, the eyes are the window to the liver, um, dark leafy greens are really great for, for liver support. So you can kind of link all these things together on your own if you're, you know, more well versed in it or you, or you know a little bit of information or if you have, if you're lucky enough to have um, an integrative or holistic veterinarian that you can go to, that is obviously the best case scenario, but I don't even have someone like that that I can go to um, here in North Carolina. So if you are more interested in learning about stuff like this, uh, the best resource is probably her book, Yin Yang Nutrition for Dogs. I reference this every day when I'm answering questions um, because I am not a veterinarian and I'm not trained in TCVM technically. I mean, obviously, I get a lot of firsthand experience. but um, And so this actually, she breaks it down by element, by personality, and so you can kind of learn how these things are interconnected, and it goes into different um, foods or recipes that you can use for specific ailments. So this book has taught me a lot. Um, her homemade food for dogs course is, uh, it does not go into any of the TCVM. It is uh, just about, you know, the nutrition part of it, the vitamins, minerals, uh, different ways to balance your meals, things like that. Um, but this also has recipes in it, but this is specifically talking about some of the TCVM principles.
And it does, if what I just started talking about sounds like Greek, uh, there are a lot of pages before she gets into the TCVM that explains a lot of the methodologies and philosophies in, in an easy to understand way, so that way you're not to left totally confused. Um, and there's also some charts in here that are really easy to reference um, when you're when you're first learning this because it really helps explain for me visually what uh, the different things mean. So anyway, I just wanted to share that little story. Jenny took, she was nice enough to take before and after pictures of little Logan's eyes. Literally the only thing we changed, we had already changed his diet, the only thing we changed was adding the Fido's flora. Um, so she was nice enough to take pictures of the transformation once we noticed that his eyes were getting a lot better. Um, so I'm going to share that on our social media afterwards so that way uh, you guys can see it and believe it. But if you're having, you know, some type of issue related to the immune system, for example, really making sure that your dog has their gut health supported or in check if they're missing something, really important. And a lot of these things you might even discover sort of accidentally um, because, you know, the gut is linked. It's this, the center of our bodies, the center of our animals' bodies, really, really important to overall health. So you might even find, like, in the case of Logan, if we just had him on Fido's flora in rotation, we would have noticed, oh, his eyes got a lot better. That's interesting. Um, but we, I had a, a suspicion that that was what was causing it. But anyway, well, sometimes uh, just looking at your animal and, and picking up on these little things, you can start to fill in the gaps from home and you don't even need to rely on necessarily a veterinarian for these small things obviously i'm not saying don't take your pet to the veterinarian um but we were able to do this to to solve his eye issue from home with the phytos flora okay oh, someone said that my dog had yeast on his feet and used the leaky gut protocol from a adored beast made it worse yeah so um one quick thing which Caroline uh, explained perfectly in the comments on Facebook. For the Adored Beast, if you are having specifically a yeast issue and you you're, or you suspect a yeast issue, definitely do their yeasty beast, I think it's called yeast, no, that's an Amalio, their yeast protocol for the Adored Beast Apothecary yeast protocol uh, because when yeast starts to die, uh, the body can actually start to react to that process um, which can cause inflammation so if you do the yeast protocol first that's a basically a slow gentle die off of the yeast to get it under control and then you could do something like the leaky gut protocol um, because you've first taken care of that yeast issue but yeah as yeast starts to die off or if you're in the middle of the leaky gut protocol and you notice um, you know some issue pops up it might be the yeast that's causing that issue the the process of the yeast dying is probably um, probably what's the culprit okay um, 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 um. just trying to sorry there's lots of comments today you guys are active in the morning we should really get our <laughs> we should really get our act together sooner here Oh, I, I also sound sick. Yeah, I was really sick over the weekend, too. Uh, the daycare germs got me, too. And uh, it was a lot of, like, uh, it's like throat and blech, phlegm. It's not fun. Anyway, um, there's a question about the vitamin E supplementation. Oh, it just, okay. There's a question about vitamin E supplementation, but Facebook just cut you off in the comments. So just send us an email if you have questions about the vitamin E talk. So I'm saying, yes, my liver dog had a lot of eye crusties. Yep, it's all interconnected. Okay, uh, I'm probably missing some questions, but Facebook is being some strange, uh, so strange for me. Uh, any advice for reactions for vaccines? Um, that's definitely, it definitely depends. So for some of our dogs that have had like, have seizures or something like that, we have different suggestions for the vaccine protocol versus um, a, an adverse reaction or, or no reaction. So I would say definitely send us an email with a little bit more information and hopefully we can help. In general, for vaccines, if you have to get them, um, Adored Beast also makes the um, anti-vaccinosis, which is now called Rebalance, but it's the same product. 
uh, we recommend that if you do, you know, if you have a puppy and they're they're getting vaccines or something like that, uh, definitely following up with the uh, adored beast anti-vaccinosis. Okay. Uh, helping for juvenile eye cataracts. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, send us an email on that one, too. We might be able to help you out with some suggestions. Okay. Anyway, um, hopefully, let's wishful thinking that Dr. Judy will be back tomorrow. <sighs> I'm not sure. Um, something else, make sure you're signed up for our holiday webinar with Dr. Katie. And this weekend, we are doing our human cookie day for, uh, for the Christmas holiday. Every year, we have a yearly tradition where we all get together and we bake Christmas cookies together. So we're doing that this weekend. And we are going to come up with some brand new recipes for um, dog and hopefully cat Christmas cookies. Um, the cat one might just be like Christmas meatballs, maybe, but we'll see what we, what we can come up with. So hopefully uh, we can next week talk about some, some cute stuff to do for Christmas. Okay, I will hopefully not see you guys tomorrow, but maybe we'll just keep it keep it open. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. And let's all well wishes to Dr. Judy. Dr. Judy, we need you. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>